Hello, hello, everybody. Happy New Year. Amen. I don't want you to have to work so hard. That better? Yes. <laughs> Amen. Good morning. Oh. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I am so honored and uh, privileged to be here this morning. I thank God for his love and his faithfulness. And I want to thank every one of you. I, I don't know how to really express my love, my thanksgiving, my appreciation to each and every one of you. Whichever way the Lord has used you, you, you may not really understand what the Lord has done through your prayers, through your givings, through your word of encouragement. God has used you in an undeniable and unforgettable ways mm -hmm. in our lives. I, I was praying and asking the Lord how he want me to, uh, what he want me to share this morning and how he want me to go. Because there's a lot of things, so many things, you, you don't even know where to start. But God has shown me great mercy. When you talk of mercy, the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 9, that I will have mercy on whom I choose to have mercy. Mm. And I will have compassion on whom I choose to have compassion. The Lord called me and my husband to go to Nigeria. And when it was time for us to do this, you know, years and years, my husband has been going and I can never thank God enough for egos. When God calls every one of us, always know there are people that God has chosen, just chosen to help you be who God has created you to be and to get to your destination. It's not something that we can do by ourselves. God has positioned men and women on our path, and every one of us plays our own part. There are people that just because of you, they will fulfill their destiny. And if you don't play that part that God has chosen you to play, they will not be able to accomplish the will of God for their lives. So that's what I've seen in my own life by God placing me in the life of Reverend Lane Ronley. Because when I came into her life, I didn't know much, you know. I just gave my life to the Lord and uh, after, I think, I, I gave my life to the Lord in 1994 and in uh, 95, my husband came to Nigeria for mission work and uh, after that, uh, um, he engaged me and came back in 96 and we got married. So I didn't... Uh, I've not grown like you have grown a lot in the Lord or whatever, but I started, you know, learning so many things. But most of the things I learned in Nigeria when I came to U.S. and especially when I met Reverend Lane, I've been in African church, even preach, do so many things for the Lord. But when I met Reverend Lane, I now knew that there is something more important in our lives that is more than every other thing we can do for the Lord. And that is having a personal relationship with the Lord and desiring yeah. it above every other thing. And I know that since I've chosen that way, it's not been easy, but the Lord who himself has called continue to empower and strengthen and enable me to aspire because sometimes like let me say when i was in america before the lord told me to join my husband i truly truly had a deep relationship with the lord and the faith i have but when i started going to nigeria oh my god i began to it's it's like really that religion want to take me back to uh, 
the the lifestyle of all the things I've learned before. You know, you see yourself just struggling and fighting that this is the right way, this is the way you want, and there are so many things around you that is trying to, you know, both spiritually, you know, here in America, we we people tell us a lot of things, but when you go to some part of Africa or <laughs> let me say Nigeria, you see things physically. The, and the, I've seen that there are things that you begin to see physically and before you know it, if you, God doesn't help you, you allow fear to get in the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but God's mercy has continually, you know, carried us through. I cannot thank mm -hmm. Reverend Lynn enough. Mm -hmm. There are some times that only her phone call, just calling me, will be the only thing I need at that particular time. Because where you find yourself, you're just asking God, what am, what do I do? What's going on? What You know, so many things. But God will just use her and she will call me and speak into my life and the strength, the courage, you know. One thing I know is that I always tell myself, I am unstoppable. I am indestructible. I am unkillable. I said this years ago when I was in, in, in here in America. Before I started joining my husband, I went through a lot of things. But I didn't know that God was preparing me for this mission to join my husband. And the one of the days I clearly had in my, in my ears, my physical ears, we thought she has died. And I stood up immediately in my altar. I said, I am unkillable. I am unstoppable. I am indestructible. And I've been using those three words. No matter the attack of the enemy, no matter the things I will face, I will just tell myself, I am unstoppable. I am unkillable. I am indestructible. Because God told me he has inscribed me in the palms of his hands. And my words are continually before him. Yeah. So if my words, if God is just holding me continually in his hands, nothing can plug me out of that place. Yeah. Right. Things will happen. Challenges will come. Trials. Things I don't even understand. Things I don't even know how to come out of. But I hold on the word of God. Amen. Our people, there's a name they give people. They say, just mm. hold God like this. It's a name, somebody's name. Mark what you put. Just hold God and hold Him. And that's it. So, 2020, when we um, left, remember, uh, it was just a week after we left that everywhere was locked up. And uh, we, we would have been here. If not, that my husband told me that we must have to leave. I was telling my husband, maybe we can go the, the uh, next two weeks or whatever. He said, no, we are leaving, we are leaving. And it's just as if God is saying, leave now. <laughs> and once we left, you know, everywhere was shut. Mm -hmm. So, but God, the Bible says that all things mm -hmm. work it out for good. Yeah. To them who love the Lord, and who are called according to his purpose. Amen. Even though COVID was something else, what happened, the devastation, people were complaining, people were, but it was that time that God chose to bless me and my husband and our ministry. It was the time he chose to, you know, begin to do things that we have never experienced experience before, like physically, you know, he, he, he was just doing things that only him can do. And uh, as we are approaching uh, December, we were supposed to come back that December 2020, but that was not what the Lord wanted, wanted us to do. Our ticket was December, first week of December. But when we saw that that's not what the Lord is saying, we changed our ticket. But 
before I go into uh, showing whatever that has been done, I just want to encourage every one of us here. The scripture that the Lord gave me, and that's the scripture that I've hold on, as of Apostles chapter 10, verse 38, says, How God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for Amen. God was with him. The key there is that God was with him. Amen. God's presence with us. Yes. God's glory. No matter what yes. we, are, we go through, no matter where we find ourselves, knowing that God is with us yes. is the greatest treasure. Because that consciousness that you are not alone, that God is with you, helps you, no matter what you see or what comes your way to challenge your path or whatever, you just tell yourself that I am not alone. God is with yes. me. And in, in the, the ministry that God has called us to, we saw that God used us. He said he, was, he anointed Jesus Christ. If our Savior, our Lord, was anointed with Holy Ghost and with power, and he went about doing good, what our ministry truly did since 2020 we left was going about doing good, healing all that were praised of the devil because of God's presence and what only God can do. We saw all that God accomplished through our lives. He opened doors for us to minister in different churches. But before, you know, uh, what we do before 2020 was going to different towns. When we go to a town, we have a meeting with all the pastors that are there. And then we plan on how to have, uh, my husband We teach uh, on personal evangelism. And then pastors and church worker seminars. After that, we will stand as a body in that very particular town. All the churches that came out. We all go out and evangelize on personal and then have open air crusade, which we usually do. But since 2020, we've, we have not done that because of the COVID. But that was when the Lord wanted us to begin to build. We did never thought of building anything. Uh, uh, when we went to Nigeria, we have... Um, I just told my husband, we have to move into this, our house, no matter whatever still needs to be done. Let's go over there and then what, and start trusting God. Because for years, we have been building this house. When all, the, all the years we have been working in America, doing everything, all the money we are making, we are sending it to build that house that we now live in. So, but... Now that uh, God called us into the ministry, that was the first thing that my husband find it so difficult to accept. For us to go to Nigeria, where will we live? Where will we do this? We don't have this, we don't have that, because before he goes and I'm working and he knows that I'll take care of bills that needs to be taken care of. But now that the Lord is saying that two of us have to go, how do we eat? What do you no no it does not nothing that you are holding and say that this is what I have that I can hold on. It was difficult. We prayed and prayed. I've shared this before that my husband, for the first time, I saw him go into depression because he couldn't believe that two of us would stop working and just go and start doing the work of God in Nigeria. And the Nigerian, being the fact that they know that you came from America, everybody is looking on to you. Nobody is, we, is, yes, it, nobody will, we do a bless you or what that. All everybody is seeing you. You came from America. Just bring what you brought from America. <laughs> so, so um, it was difficult. Yeah. But God used one of our friend, Apostle Prince. By the time he finished talking to us and said that we should step out in faith and trust God, I told my husband. God showed me vividly. In a vision, I saw what I was doing in America 
come to an end. Mm -hmm. And he showed me another light. It's, it's like a tunnel. And I saw the end of the, the other one and the beginning of what he wanted to do. And that gave me everything in me that God cannot tell us to leave America, everything, and go to Nigeria and we'll be disappointed. Mm -hmm. But to take that first step was so mm -hmm. difficult. I thank God for Reverend Lane that God used to begin to, you know, prophesy. She told me that God said that you will never lack anything. Mm -hmm. Just step out. God used her in an undeniable way. And we st step out. And I tell you, God has shown us great mercy. Not because we have so many people supporting us, but the very few that he has chosen, when I look at what God has done, I just know that God is our source and all in all. Amen. Only him Amen. can provide for us. All we need to do, trust him. Has he spoken to you? Hold on whatever the Lord has spoken to you. When I gave my life to the Lord and started moving, you know, I was going through, uh, passing through persecution. And I was seeing these born again people as people that, that are next to God. The way I see born again, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't even know that a born again Christian is doing, you know, there are things I didn't accept that a born again Christian can do. Mm. But all of a sudden, Somebody, the enemy wanted to use somebody to discourage me. And already my mom has brought some people from Catholic that told me that I will go and come back because they are deceiving me and this, this, this. But I knew and I knew I had an encounter with the living God. Mm -hmm. And the encounter I had, nobody, it's not worth anybody. When you encounter the living God, there's nothing in this out. No matter what it is, that's why my parents, even until my dad died, it's difficult for him to accept that it's not voodoo they used on me because that was what he told all my siblings sure. that they used voodoo on me, that it's no longer me, it's somebody else. Because my dad knew me, I love him, and uh, he took care of us. Mm -hmm. But when the Lord spoke to me that if I love my parents more than him, that I'm not worthy of the kingdom. Yeah. Something happened in me. Yeah. And that broke something between me and my dad. Mm -hmm. And I began to seek the Lord. You know? So, but the way it was happening, only God can... If you don't know Jesus, you will, you will think it's a voodoo. <laughs> so, they believe, so they believe it's voodoo. But God, in his infinite mercy, began that walk in my life mm. i went well that day i was discouraged i went to the church a man of god was ministering you know that that was the my when my dad chased me out of the house and told me to go let those people take care of me and do whatever you know so i left i didn't even know i would finish my college because I was in my third day in the university when I gave my life to the Lord. But this man of God called my name and called me to come out and I came out and he began to speak into my life and tell me the call of God upon my life and what God is going to do through me. I've never had, I didn't know who is Ketrin Kuma, but she, he was the first person that was telling me about the woman and what God would do in my life. He said so many things. So, because already I was beginning to ask myself, what I was seeing is, is, um, is it, is the enemy trying to get me out of being born again, you know? So, but God used this man of God to just encourage me and help me to know that I am on the right path. Wow. Amen. So, and the, when I went to Lagos, the Lord visited me and told me I was going to marry a man of God and everything about my life, God shared with me then. So, and it helped me in the persecution, what I went through as, you know, uh, still being with my parents and the, everything they did. But few, uh, when we came in, I know 
the call of God upon my life. And I know that this center that God has built is going to be an opening for the call of God upon my life. I know it, and I, I, all I know is that I don't know the timing of the Lord and whatever He's doing in my life, but there are things I know and I know that God has spoken to me, and the, the way God works with me is whichever one is timing for whatever He has told me, He knows how to do it, not what I can fight to do. Before, I thought it's by uh, my struggle and my prayers. But I have to come to a place of knowing that God is God in all of everything. Before I met Elaine, before I met Elaine, there was a time in the church I was going. I, I, was, I thought that serving God is all about getting this or getting that. I was trusting the Lord for the fruit of the womb. And uh, I came to a place, each time I come to church, I would just be, you know, people see the anointing of God upon my life and they come to me pray for me, do this, do this, but inside, I, I was wondering, why can't God give me children? Mm -hmm. He told me he was going to give me children. And the, when each time I, I doubt it, he, we, he has used more than three different people from, four different, both from different angles or countries to confirm what he has spoken to me. So, but for how many years? But then, when I, the, my desire wasn't just pursuing God, I was just after that children, children, children. I would go to the church, I would be crying inside of everything in me, just that children. Yeah. You know? But I, when, I, I had, when I began to seek, pursue God and seek after the heart of God, I saw that children is not the greatest thing that one will have in this world. God has promised what he will do for me, and that is timing. And I, I am one that believes that age cannot stop a woman from having a child. Mm -hmm. I read it from the word of God. Mm -hmm. It's only what you accept. Mm -hmm. If God says this, whatever God says is what he will do. Mm -hmm. Whatever God has, if I can see somebody that God has even done this for in the word of God, I can hold him. Father, you, this is your word. But I will not tell him when to do it. He is the almighty God. He does what he wants to do. But he himself has promised me and he has used me to pray for people, believing God for the fruit of the womb. And he blessed them. And the, it will be impossible for him to tell me that he will give me children and he will not give me. Amen. So I hold on his word and trust him whichever way he chooses to do it. So, but the, the key thing there is that then it was just like as if, but up to how many years now? Mm -hmm. The children are not here, but I am serving the Lord. Mm -hmm. I am moving into my destiny. I am being a blessing. God, my name, my Igbo name is blessing. Mm -hmm. And that's what God has created me for, to be a blessing mm -hmm. to many. Mm -hmm. People, people have been <laughs> blessed. I can tell you, People, people, many, many have been blessed. Even when I, I, I not, not even the ministry, just the money that Ellen gives me as uh, my own personal money every month that she, she sows into my life, people have been blessed with that. Because my husband will tell me, uh, this, this, this. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but... I cannot live, I cannot see a child of God suffering without being a blessing. That's, that's my heart. So, but Reverend have told me that my mercy cannot outweigh God's mercy. <laughs> yeah, because it, it just, be, I think it's because of what I went through when I gave my life to the Lord. I suffered. Mm -hmm. So that makes me, when I see a child of God suffering, it's just like, how can I help? What, what can I do to help in, in that area? But I'm now cautioning myself because I don't want to get into what God is doing in the life of somebody, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but why, I was, why I'm sharing about this was that when we came in, I believe today, 
If there's anybody hearing my voice and you are trusting God for healing in any area of your life, God is going to demonstrate who he is in your life today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes. Our God is a healing God. Amen. You know, on, on, on Friday, we were supposed to come in on Friday and when we got to... Um, I think it was maybe two hours before we get into Atlanta, the pilot announced that they don't have fuel or gas. Which one? Yeah. <laughs> because in Nigeria we call fuel here. So they they, they diverted and went to uh, Atlanta, was mm -mm, Charlotte. Chicago, Charlotte, Charlotte, Charlotte. Charlotte. Yes, Charlotte. they went there to buy uh, get some gas or some fuel. So he wasted a lot of time. So by the time we got to uh, Atlanta, our, our um, flight has gone. And so many people from Nigeria and from different parts of the world, so many, it affected many people. Mm -hmm. So they have to keep us in a hotel. But when I, when we, uh, after, by the time we finished there, it was almost, we got to the hotel 2, 2 a.m. And we have to leave early. 7 7 a.m. or so. So, but uh, the, the cold, what happened to me that day? I was so cold because I didn't have uh, 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 things to cover myself. I didn't think, I, I didn't plan for that. But when they told us that we have to go, uh, the bus have to take us to the hotel, we, we, we went there and they, we have to wait for the bus outside for, ah. for some, that is, all my body, I was, the cold was something else. Mm -hmm. So, but why I'm sharing this is for us to see how the enemy can fight. Mm -hmm. Fight us through fear and the words that come out of our mouth. When, when we came into Dallas on, on Saturday, you know, our, our friend picked us up and we were in her house. And all of a sudden, I see myself coughing, and she thinks it's COVID, you know? Wow. And the immediate, I'm, I don't, I've never, the thought of COVID never crossed my mind. But, you know, I, I just saw that fear in her. And she said, uh, we are going to, uh, she's going to test me for COVID after three days and this, this, this. And then, before I know it, the cough continued. But that day that she was supposed to test me for COVID, in the, God, I got up so early, the Lord ministered to me that morning mm. and told me to uh, start covering myself very well. That he, he reminded me what happened to me that day we came in, that it was cold, yeah. that I'm cold, that I've caught cold, yeah. that I have to yeah. take care of myself. So, and the, because if not, the fear of what she has already spoken that uh, I have COVID and all, you know, and herself, the kind of fear you can see it. I started, that immediately the Lord told me that I started praying and I started binding whatever spirit behind that because the enemy will always try to oh, yeah. bring something to intimidate us. Yeah. And it is for me and you to say no. That's right. It's not for me. You have to go back to where you are coming from. My husband, I was sleeping with my husband in the same bed, but my husband never coughed. But I need I started coughing. Oh. You see? So she started, it, before you know, it's that fear. You know, she yeah. was coughing yeah. and, they, and and she, she gets irritated. So, but uh, when, when she tested me and saw that I didn't have COVID, I, I, God use it at least help her to relax because she has not she has not she, she has not gotten COVID since since 2019. So why will it be now that the Lord brought us in her house? I said, God, no, this will not happen. Yeah. She, we are we are here and she is going to be blessed because God yeah. brought us into her house, yeah. not for her to start suffering for you know. So, but. Why I am why I'm sharing this is for us to understand that the power in our mouth, Jesus Himself, the Bible says that in in the book of Exodus first, uh, um, 
15, 26, God said that he himself, let me just read some scriptures. Exodus 15 verse 26 says, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and we do that which is right in his sight, and we give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, yeah. which I have brought upon the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. For I am the Lord that he led thee. Amen. God himself is the one that makes a distinction between they that serve him and they that do not serve him. And in, 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 in chapter 23, he says, If you serve the Lord your God, he will take sickness away from us. That's the promise of God. Yes. In the book of Isaiah, he said he himself took upon himself. He took it. Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon Jesus Christ. And by his stripes we have been made whole. So we are the one that we choose to hold on what the Lord has provided for us. Matthew 8, 17 says, He himself took it. So if Jesus already took it upon himself, I will not allow the enemy to put it upon me. And the only way we will do it is our mouth. We must open up our mouth wide. And declare what God is saying concerning us in every circumstance, in every situation, no matter what we are going through, no matter how that thing looks like or how I feel. How I feel is not as important as to what God is saying concerning that circumstance. We may feel that's one of the things that the Lord taught me when I was going through what I went through before I started going for mission. He said that we have been raised up to sit together with Christ Jesus in the heavenlies. Yes. And where we are is far and above all principalities, all power, all dominion. We are above every name that is named. Yes. Not yes. only in yes. this age, but yes. also in the age to come. Yes. And our life is hidden with Christ and Christ in God. When well, when the Lord was teaching me when before I started going to, to mission, that it doesn't matter how I will feel or what will happen to me, but let me see myself that I am far and above those things that are happening. Yeah. I can see myself, you know, before before um, all these things, there was a time I used to, you know, before I came to America, I would go through an uh, attack of the enemy and I would see myself at the gunpoint, they will put, use gun. And when I wake up, I will feel the pain of those guns in me. I will feel it. There are so many things that I've gone through then, but I didn't thought I was going through it, but then I, I, I didn't understand what it means to live in the spirit or to live in the flesh. Mm -hmm. But now I'm learning that there is a that there's a child of God can choose to begin to live in the spirit and Amen. not in the flesh. Amen. And so many of us don't know Amen. most of these things because we are not taught. So, but when the Lord began to help me to understand that it doesn't matter how I feel or what I see in the dream or what the enemy is projecting, that where I am is far and above all those things. Amen. But once I see myself focusing on those things, it will begin to affect me. That's what I saw Amen. this period, all this period that I'm in Nigeria. So I saw myself focusing on things that the enemy is doing against mm -hmm. me. Because my bedroom is here and I come to, I want to lie, lie down and all I'm hearing from that side is, die, die. Fire, fire from, <laughs> you know, from people over there praying. The, the, it was just, God, I need your help from all this. Mm -hmm. There's a prayer house there. There's a prayer house the other place. There's people 
surrounding you are just people that are not God. They, they use God to do whatever they are doing, but they are deceivers, serving, yeah. serving Satan. Mm -hmm. But those that are following them don't know that they are serving Satan. Yeah. They, will, they will doing all manner of things, fighting you, doing all things. So when I see myself focusing and hearing all those things they are doing, before I know it, I will see myself start going down. Mm. If not God, I will not be alive today. Mm. Wow. But the word of God, the power of the word of God, holding on the word of God, mm. believing on what God says, not your circumstances. Yeah. Because the enemy will do everything to take us out before the time that God has called us to live. Mm. But we are the one that we hold on the word of God. God is not a man that he can lie. Neither a son of man that he can repent of his word. Whatever God has said, he's going to do it. If he says he's going to protect us, he has everything it takes to protect us. If he says he's watching over our lives, it means he's watching over our lives. But we have to say, God, even though I feel this way, I don't care what I'm feeling. What you say is what I am after. This is what you are saying. Mm -hmm. And I hold you by your word. I believe your word. I trust your word. And I trust you to do what only you can do in my life. Yes. Amen. So that's the key. That's what the, the Lord has used to carry us through. There are some times I've seen myself, see all manner of things going on. And I begin to ask the Lord. And God, we, we, that's the greatest joy that I can ask the Lord something and hear him give me instruction. Mm -hmm. This is what is going on. This is Amen. what to do. Amen. And whenever I see myself struggling to find the voice of the Lord, to know, you know, there are sometimes I see myself, you, I'm, I just know that something is going on with me, but I don't know what to do. I can't hear the voice of the Lord, but all I know is that I am there, Father. I am worshiping you. I'm praising you. I don't understand what is going on with me. But you are all in all to me. And I know you can never fail me. You can. God spoke to me clearly. That he is too faithful to fail me. Amen. And I wrote on his word. That he is too faithful Amen. to fail me. No matter whatever I go through. He's a loving God. I always use my earthly daddy. To Think about the, the greatness of the God we serve. My dad, when I was in, doing my ND program, told my uncle, whatever I need, once I come there and tell my uncle this is what I need, he will give me everything I need because my dad will take care of it. Mm -hmm. So, and the Bible says, if our earthly father know how to take good care of us, how mm -hmm. much more? How much more? Mm. If my dad can just, he want to take good care of me and he, he tells his brother, once my daughter comes and need whatever she needs, just give it to, to her. I'm going to take care of it. How about the mm. almighty God? Sweet. Amen. Sweet. Amen. What Amen. is it? No, there is nothing. God is not able to see us through. But there are things that are helping us. Mm. We may not understand, but those are the paths that we will go through mm. because of where God is taking us to. If there is nowhere that God is taking you through, then things can be so easy. The enemy will leave you alone. But if there is something definite about you that God has spoken to you or where you are going, I want to encourage you. The enemy will do everything to discourage you, but you are the one that will stand just like uh, 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 David did. The Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Yeah. We are the one that we choose to encourage ourselves in the Lord our God. Because whatever path God has chosen for us to go through, there is a reason. He knows what he's doing in our life. And this has made me to greatly appreciate men and women of God that have seen where they are. It makes me to see that these people have paid great prices 
Because sometimes you just see people and see what God is doing in their life. We just think that it's just, uh, uh, maybe some people will say they're lucky. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. When they open their mouth and share with us the things they have gone through, that have prepared them to get them to where they are today. Mm -hmm. And they, everybody wants to come and celebrate with them. So may the Lord encourage every one of us in whatever area God has called us, in whatever you are facing in your life as a challenge, be it maritally, be it a, a, in any area, even from children, whatever, whichever way that you are facing a challenge and this there, just know that that is working out for your good because God has spoken that all things, all, not some things. All things work it out for good mm -hmm. to them that love the Lord Amen. and to them who are called according to his purpose. Oh, yeah. I will always ask myself, patience, do you really love the Lord? Mm -hmm. If I love him, this is working out for my good. Mm -hmm. If I am called according to his purpose, I may not understand, but this will work out for my good. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he will do it, but he has said that this is going to work out for my good. And I believe him and trust him. Amen. Whichever way he chooses to do it so that it will work out for my good. Don't be discouraged. Don't hear the voices of religious people that want you to believe that like in, in I'm telling you it takes the grace of God. <laughs> I told God before I can go to Nigeria. Look at me and I'm now in Nigeria stayed almost getting, is it not three years and nine months I was in Nigeria? But I am the one that told God before, mm. I am not going back to Nigeria. <laughs> and God spoke to me clearly that if I don't do what he has called me to do, whatever I'm believing him for, that I will not, he, he told me that. Mm. So there, there are places you may desire to go and do things. And there are places you may not desire. But if God has created you and called you to do that, there's nothing you can do. It's just to obey him. The <laughs> grace, the grace will be there. Yeah. It's not by might, it's not by power, it's just the grace of God. Mm -hmm. So be encouraged and be strengthened. Mm -hmm. And know that he who has called us is more than faithful. Mm -hmm. He's preparing us for whatever it is. No matter what happened today in the earth, we have to encourage ourselves. Say to myself, this is not for me. I, I'm not fearing whatever is going to happen because God is the owner of the earth and all of his fullness. It's what God allows that will happen. And God has promised us that he's keeping us his own, his children. It, you know how joyful I am when I, I read this give, giving 15 and see when they were using uh, anointing oil, you know, securing all their borders in U.S. and every, every, you just see people, the joy and what people are doing because they're hearing the voice of prophets and yeah. obeying. Yeah. Sometimes it looks as if the prophets are speaking and we want to, he, we want to see the manifestation of what they're saying immediately. But it may not be immediately. And that it doesn't we, doesn't, we don't see it now, does not mean that God is not speaking through them. Amen. God is speaking through the mouth of his prophets. Amen. I have experienced something that made me to know that if not for these prophets, my, my brothers and my sisters, if not for these prophets that God has raised up, that have stood and speaking, the Antichrist, the global. Uh, uh, globalists would have succeeded in their plan. Yeah. I, somebody called me from this U.S. and was telling me about all the agenda, everything has been, you know, put in place. Was it not 2021? <laughs> everything has been put in place that they don't have um, time anymore. Everything is going to be good and this, 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 this that just by the time this lady finished speaking, I said, are you still born again? <laughs> <laughs> do you, yeah, 
that because I, I thought she was a child of, she was a born again Christian. Uh -huh. But by the time I finished speaking with her, she wanted to put fear in me. Uh -huh. and, and, and she wanted to um, help our ministry by humanitarian and all those things. Uh -huh. But I told her we don't need such help. Uh -huh. That I need money is not from anywhere. That's right. I told her clearly, we don't need such help. Mm -hmm. This is what God has called us to. Yeah. And that God who has called us is able to help us. Yeah. Everything she told me that uh, Queen of um, Elizabeth uh, have died, Elizabeth, the Queen of uh, the Queen. Uh, have died since the moment they announced about the, the death. Everything we set in. They have planned. The globalists have planned everything they want to do. But the voice of the prophets mm. shut them. Mm. So many of us didn't understand what was going on. Yeah. It was the voice of the prophets mm. that cannot allow the globalists to enforce what they have put in place. Amen. Amen. All their plans, they have planned it and done whatever yeah. they do. But yeah. God through the voice of his prophets, is speaking yeah. and declaring it's not yet time. That's yeah. right. God has his timing in whatever he wants to do and yeah. he's the owner of the earth. Yeah. The earth is the Lord and all of his fullness. Yeah. So God is still in control. Yeah. I asked mm -hmm. the lady, who is in control of the earth? Mm -hmm. That's right. Is the almighty God, the creator, who is the owner of the earth and the controller of the whole universe. Amen. And nothing can happen before the time he has Amen. ordained it. Yes. So our God is still in charge no matter what the noise of the enemy is making all his right. noise to intimidate us, to put fear in us so that yeah. we begin to focus on their lives. Mm -hmm. Let the word of God if there's anything we need to cry out to God is to give us a fresh appetite yeah. for the word. Yes. The Amen. word of God is what will encourage us, is what will strengthen us, mm -hmm. is what will empower us, yeah. is what will give us whatever we stand in need of. Because once we are st strong spiritually, we don't have any problem. Mm -hmm. But once we start hearing all those lies and noise of the enemy, before you know it, what we hear affects us. The Bible says that we have to guide what we hear in our ears, what we see. Because you don't know. You can hear something and you didn't even take it as anything. Before you know it, the enemy has started using that thing against you. So let the word of God empower us this year. So that we focus only on what God is doing and what he's saying to us individually.